This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, in California, a person that we love talking to about once a week, uh, once every couple of weeks, whatever. His name is Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Hello, Alex. Yes. Yes. Uh, I know I'm Mr. Mr. Excitement, so well, you know you what we should do. Me on here. What we should do is we should change your name. Now, here's what I'm talking about. You know, today they always do things like J Lo. You know, <laughs> things like that. So I'm I'm just thinking that something like LBB would be really a great way to refer to you. How Notorious you doing? LBB. Let's just try it on. How you feeling, LBB? Yeah, I kind of like that. I, you had a good one. I actually said it on stage one night. It's because of the change of demographics. I should change my name to El Fomo. El what? El Fomo. <laughs> got a laugh too i tried it el fomo oh boy yeah hey you've been working at all uh, now that the uh the, the some of the restrictions have been lifted i did have one of my first real gigs the other night yes in lodi but as a winery it was actually very nice so mm -hmm. uh, it was fun i could barely remember 20 minutes so uh that had to be real strange after what a year and four months year or and a half year and, and a half I, I saw Rich Scheidner. I don't know if you know him. He yeah. bought a bunch of comics were saying, oh, I, I'm really lost on stage right now. And he said that after Richard Pryor had his accident, that uh, it took him a year, a full year, to get back to normal So to, on stage. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it, 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 the, people don't understand this, but there's such a thing as there's certain... person gets up and does comedy, and they just think, oh, that looks easy. You know, that's... Uh, well, the hard part, it's its like gay sex. The hard part is making it look easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the hard part is making it look easy. I mean, you make it look effortless, and yet there's a lot that goes into it. There's the creation of the material. There's the timing. There's the, you know, and then you you got to remember all this stuff. you got to remember the material. Rodney Dangerfield, someone that used to work with him, told me he'd freaked out every day he did a show because... In an hour, he would do 250 to 300 jokes. Wow. And so he, he would just listen to a cassette all day and try to get them in his head. Really? Yeah. You would think that would kind of come naturally, you know. That uh, I wonder if, if Henny Youngman had the same problem. There was another... I mean, we're talking about comedians who, who tell jokes one after the other. Yeah, the one-liners. You can do, like, a, a quick joke is, like... Uh, ten seconds, so you can do six in a minute. Who's the guy I'm thinking of? Uh, but he was in uh, Reservoir Dogs. He did the voice in Reservoir Dogs. Uh, 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 Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. I mean, it's just it's one joke after another. It, it, there is no material, as it were. There's no pieces, hunks. You know. It's, no, and he uh, he walks back and forth to the corners of the stage and someone told me he when he was doing that he was trying to remember the next joke That's yeah yeah because i mean he was one joke after the he was he was a great one-liner great jokes and there none of them were connected to each other so that's make so you don't even get a chunk so that's why it'd be really hard to remember yeah, yeah. he is i haven't seen him do comedy lately is there a reason for that I think he's got a he's got a strong enough following where he can pretty much sell out a two thousand seat theater anywhere, so you can make a pretty good living doing that. And I think that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. So he just he just kind of like just does one or two couple of shows a year to make yeah. his living, and uh, yeah. But you and know. he had that uh, amazing shot on Carson in '82 when I was a rookie comic, and uh, I remember they. He got an HBO special, but they're trying to put him 
in a sitcom or something, they, they really didn't know what to do with him, other because he just tells these jokes. He, but, he, uh, he didn't fit anywhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, he had a great voice. That's why they used him, uh, uh, Tarantino used him in Reservoir Dogs as the radio announcer. Uh, and it really fit. It really worked. But it, there was no material there that he had to do. It was something he was just reading, you know. So, uh, but, uh, no, you couldn't, uh, what could you, uh, Stephen Wright, what kind of a sitcom could you put him in? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, it, it'd be hard. <laughs> maybe about a guy who has a medical problem in which all he ever talks in is one-liners. Maybe that would be a good uh, series for him. That might work, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, um, did you, you know, you, you the trouble with you, Larry, I think you could have had a bigger career. I really think you could have had a bigger career. I think you... Well, it couldn't have been much smaller. <laughs> but no, it, it hasn't been small. I mean, let's face it, you know, you're working, still working to this day. There are comedians who love to have you open for them. Because you're a great act to put on before any other comic, just simply because you don't spoil the room. You know, you're a very low key act. So uh, I mean, no, nobody would want to follow a loud act. You know what no. I'm saying? You you wouldn't want to follow, for instance, oh, in the old days, Bob Goldthwait. You know, no way to no, follow. No, oh my God, no. And no. it's not that Goldthwait was good. Although he was, but in those days. But it wasn't that he wasn't good, it was just that he was loud. And you can't follow that. You can't follow a guy who plays a musical instrument in his act. These are or all someone people... Someone that juggles. Someone that juggles. We, we're talking about acts literally that kill the room. You don't kill the room. You just you do your jokes, you come out, you're low-key, you know... And then anybody can follow you. It's not that you're not as good as they are. It's just that you don't spoil the room for them. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And uh, I tell uh, younger comics, it's, I don't think anyone gets famous anymore. But if you want to make a living, uh, if, you can, oh, if you can open for someone that is famous, that's not a bad life. Well, I, know, I'm, I remember somebody once that I knew that was, was opening for somebody. And it was somebody fairly famous. And he said, boy, I'm going to go up there and blow them away. And I went, that's not your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not your Worst job. Worst thing you can do. Your job is to set up the room for them. You're, the, you're, not, the, <laughs> you're not the main act. You're the opening act. You're supposed to set the table, as it were, right? And he went, yeah, I oh, I'm going to... So you don't want to work for this guy again? Yeah, I said, he said, I'm going to blow them away. I said, that's not your job. Your job is to be... Is to is to just set up the room for him, and you. That's what you do, you know, because you you are uh, cognizant of the fact that you're not the headliner. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you, uh, yeah, Will Durst used to have the feeling that he he followed somebody that was really loud one night. It was kind of rough, and he said, "Well, I'm the headliner. I should be able to follow anyone." But I, no, I said, uh, "No, that you should be you should be set up." And that person who's opening for you should have enough respect for you that he doesn't try to, like, turn the room. Yeah. You know? And if he, if he can't do that, then he shouldn't be opening for you. But, no, I don't think... I don't agree with Durst. Uh, because I think I could take uh, uh, Robin Williams or something and put him up against somebody who's louder than he is, and he would have a hard time following him. Yeah, you know. So I mean, that's that's the way that is. So uh, how? Uh, so you, the the gigs went good then, huh? The gig went very nice. Yeah. So it's uh, were people required to still wear masks or? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Although things are getting bad again, so I, I think I was going to come back. I know. I'm supposed to go into like court in a, a couple of days for my uh, apartment thing. And I don't think I don't want to show up. I, I I just think it's getting dangerous out there again. The infection rate is high again. I mean, I've been vaccinated, but I can still get it. You know, 
There's still a chance well, I can get it, and I don't. I think you're safe. You're, if you, even if you get it, you're not going to get as sick as you would, they say, y- right? Yeah, and that's very nice to know. But are we sure of that? <laughs> you know? I mean, I just, I think that we're jump, we were jumping into this thing too fast uh, by saying, take off your mask, go have a good time. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's like a nude swim at the lake during camp, you know. Everybody, <laughs> go go do what you got to do and, you know, have a good time and blah, 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 blah. And, oh, by the way, there's a new variant now. Well, what brought that on? I think it was all these people not uh, having to wear masks anymore. You know, so I mean, uh, would we have had this new variant? Would it have been able to grab hold if everybody were still wearing masks? You know, so I don't know. I'm, I'm the Delta variant. The Delta variant, yes, which I thought was just another crappy airline. Yeah, no, they're gonna, and there's one after it. There's like the Omega, I think, is the next one or something. Oh, they'll probably run the alphabet. They're going to run the alphabet, and then they're going to run the Jewish alphabet. There's going to be the Chai, (laughs) and there's going to be the Aleph, and the, uh, yeah. Uh, And then them, you know, but uh, they're going to run the the, uh, Greek alphabet. uh, But uh, I don't know if this thing's ever going away. I'm beginning to think it's not. I'm, I'm beginning to think that in one form or another, until everybody gets vaccinated, I mean everybody, it's still going to be there in various stages and various mutations. You know, I mean, this is a very robust bug. It just keeps adapting and keeps adapting. Oh, you you you, you found something to... Um, um, Give people shots against me, huh? Well, I'll fool you. I'll come up with something more. Then it just keeps coming and coming, and I'm I'm sick. Of, I'm sick and tired of it. Well, the Spanish flu lasted three years and virtually disappeared in one week. So who knows? Did it disappear in one week? But it said virtually overnight. Like I think in a week. Yeah, I just zap. It was gone. Wow. Now, and they didn't come up with like a vaccine. They didn't. There come was no up, vaccine then. Were, no. After it took about what fifty million people, something like that. They said fifty, possibly a hundred million, we, and the population of the world was a fourth of what it is now. Yeah, wow. So that, that was incredible. Wow. And then it just one day, no more. I read literally gone in a week. That I I find hard to believe, but you know if they say that, it must be true. Well, we can ask Alexa. <laughs> but, the, the, yeah, I just, uh, it was killed so many people. I, I can't get over those numbers. Yeah. You, you know where it started? I was talking to somebody the other day. It started in um, Kansas. Kansas in a, uh, at a military army camp. Uh, army camp. And then it went to Europe. I don't know why they called it the Spanish flu. Because it, well, it started here, and those they sent the soldiers over there, and that's where it's they kind of delivered it in Spain. But uh, yeah, it started here. But but were we at war in Spain? Were we fighting in Spain? I don't. Oh, there's think so. funneling troops throughout Europe. So oh, okay, all right. So, and uh, that was that was the thing that started in Kansas. They are burning a huge pile of horse crap, and they think that's where it came from. And all these guys breathed it in. Wow! Yeah. Wow. So, but this is you know, if we had got this, if the Spanish flu happened today, I think it wouldn't be a problem because we have uh, antibiotics and we have all kinds of things that we didn't have. They probably then. have treatments for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you talk about bugs which are more pernicious, this one is the worst I think ever. I think this may beat the Black Plague. Well, that killed a quarter of the population. Yeah, but the, how small, how large was the population at the time? True. But so, so, uh, so what you're saying, percentage. what you're saying is that every so often a plague comes along and wipes out a quarter of the population. <laughs> well, not well. I wish that were true, but uh, it would be good probably. Well, I mean, can't we? Couldn't we consider that? Um, uh, that maybe this is nature's way of weeding us out. Oh, absolutely. 
you know. I think uh, nature's saying uh, this place is too crowded. That's not healthy. And, and, and what does cause the spread of these diseases is people getting together in crowds. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, what what's interesting is that you had the Black Plague at a time when the population was far more sparse. I mean, I don't think you had what what we call uh, 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 what do you call it? the event? You know, the events that cause spread, uh, mass spread events. Uh, I don't think we had that back then. We just had the Black Plague. And what caused yeah. the Black Plague? Do you know? It was spread by rats, but it was a lot of it was done by there was no sewage then. People would literally uh, go to the bathroom, like in London, and just throw it out their window on the street. But wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, the, the, so the Black Plague was caused by fleas, I think, on yeah, ra- uh-huh. on rats. But, but I think the shit and everything helped spread it. So yeah. Rats running around. It, and, the rats didn't have it. It was the fleas on the rats. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how many did that kill? Quarter of the population, you say? Quarter of the population, but I don't know what the population was. And then how, do you know how fast it went away? That I don't know. I'll bet it was really fast. You know. I, because it's not like it, if people got together and said, here's how you prevent the Black Plague. You know, and then said, wear a mask and do this and do that and wash your hands and whatever. You know, they didn't they didn't do that sort of thing. So apparently it probably just died out again on its own. Yeah, this would be interesting to know. And I wonder if there's been any more plagues that we don't know about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is not going to be the last one for us, you know. No, there they, were uh, there were small tribes of Indians in America that uh, they got a bug and just wiped out the entire camp. So. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So I don't think people probably aren't meant to live close together. The uh, I would I would say, I would say, but I mean, it's it's terrible. It's just terrible. Uh, this whole thing, and it's it's I've seen it in my lifetime. You know, I mean, when I was a kid, we had all kinds of uh, little things like uh, that little thing called polio. But that wasn't that was it was killing, but not that many. It wasn't deadly uh, uh, or necessarily deadly. Um, But it was disabling. It was disabling. Yeah. And uh, in that same period of time, we also had tuberculosis. But tuberculosis was, again, debilitating, but not necessarily killing people, although killing some people. I think my uncle died of, uh, of tuberculosis. Um, Didn't they have sanitariums for people with tuberculosis? Well, what they, what they felt was the way to cure tuberculosis was to put you outdoors in a bed. In other words, uh, but the, I think what what it did was it would just prevent the spread because it was outdoors. But they used to they used to go to sanitariums, and during the day the beds would be rolled out into an area, and people would lie in their beds outdoors in the sun. They didn't know how to listen. They didn't know how to cure any of this stuff because we didn't no. have antibiotics. We didn't have the kind of medicine we have today. We're very lucky with COVID that we were able to come up with a vaccination. I mean, that we have the science now to do it. You know, and the science they used for this vaccination was different than any other vaccination. Most vaccinations, they give you a little bit of whatever bug it is that you're trying to prevent. You get a small little case of it, and then you have antibodies. This was a whole different thing that had to do with DNA and and, uh, you know, it, there was nothing of live killed viruses in this vaccine. That's why I always argued they shouldn't have called it a vaccine. You know, but but we didn't have that years ago. We didn't have that back in the days of polio and and tuberculosis and, um, and the the Spanish flu. You know, but when I was a kid, I mean, you know, parents were really afraid their kids were going to get polio. And they wouldn't let them go swimming, for instance. Uh, I heard my parents, because my sister's older than me, they, they were just absolutely freaked about the polio back then. Oh. And they, yeah, they always mentioned it. Everybody thought it was swimming pools. And 
Yeah, but you just didn't want your kid to get it, and they felt that maybe it was in the water. But you know what they say called cause polio? Um, cleanliness. And I know that doesn't make sense, but what happened was is that prior to about the 20s or 30s, we were a very filthy country. You know, we had horse shit literally piling up on uh, in gutters yeah. in the streets of America, you know, and we had all kinds of bugs running around and everything. So with all of that, you create antibodies. But when you start cleaning up the society, which we started doing at that point, you st start creating a situation where especially the newer born kids are not born with the antibodies they would have been 20 years earlier and that there was this little thing running around called polio, and it never could kind of grab hold because the world was too filthy for it. Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah. And that ultimately they did something about it, you know, and uh, it, it, it's, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was crazy, but it was the cleanliness that caused polio. At least that's what I saw in a book on polio. Uh, that they 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 say that it had the world been a little dirtier, we wouldn't have had polio. So okay, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the other one I read was that uh, that's when they started routinely removing people's tonsils. They uh, there was a theory that tonsils were actually a, a good uh, virus barrier, and that might have well, yes, it is, but problem. I don't think that's what caused polio. I mean, it was it was uh, that you know it, when when you're when kids are born, when you know, you send your kid to school, and your kid comes in contact with every bug known to mankind, and by the time he's through with school, with grade school, he's probably immune to a lot of things. But if you then clean everything up, and then you bring these kids into it, they're more susceptible. To this is why kids got polio rather than adults, for the most part. Uh, although we did have adults who got it, the most famous being Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was pretty much, you know, in a wheelchair for most of his life. So, Although the public didn't know it. They never knew it. Um, never the, happened today. Here, he used to come and speak at the at Waldorf Astoria. And to this day, under the Waldorf Astoria is a train track and what he used to do is bring the train. They'd bring the train, and then they'd derail it and bring it into this track that went under the Ambassador Hotel, the uh, uh, Waldorf Astoria. And then there was an elevator that would take him up in his wheelchair. And they would, they would, he was so secret that nobody, they, in fact, there's no film. There's only one film of him in a wheelchair or one photograph. Uh, they just wouldn't allow anybody to take a picture of him in the wheelchair. And wow. the press was very uh, very good about that. The press went, you know, today everybody would want to we'll give $100,000 to anybody that gets a picture of him in a wheelchair, right? Yeah, but in those exactly. days, the press had a lot of honor, and they went, well, we're just not going to make a big deal out of this. I'll give you another example. Wasn't the uh, the press was aware that JFK was having was, all these affairs? I was going to bring that up. Yes, they knew who they knew who he was sleeping with. Boy, they'd never keep that under wraps. No. Yeah, and they just didn't report it. And I asked one reporter, "Why is it you don't report it?" And he said, "Because we don't consider it important, and it's 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 in inflicting yourself on somebody's private life." That's the way they felt wow. about it back then. God, that's a better world. Isn't it a better world? And if today, I mean, if they, if, for instance, I knew, I think I, I was told he was sleeping with Glennis Johns. Remember the actress Glennis Johns? And the press, <laughs> really? The, the press knew all. <laughs> I heard the name, yeah. <laughs> the press knew all about it, you know. But do you think they followed him places with her? You know, or try to get a picture. Even if they could get a picture of him with her, they wouldn't publish it. Jesus. And it wasn't because they liked Kennedy. It was because they considered it improper to Im, that sex was off off the table. Okay, sexual affairs, pictures of people together. Uh, you know, 
uh, that kind of thing, because that wasn't important. That had nothing to do with politics. Well, times have changed, haven't they, Bubs? <laughs> Not for the better. Yeah. Boy, what a nice discussion we've had today. Yeah. Yes, talking about the indiscretions of presidents and hiding presidents and... Uh, um, just the whole thing about Glennis the, Johns. Where do I know? Why, why, what was she in? I, I, I can't. Remember name. I can't remember. But she was. She was in a, quite a few films for a while. Very attractive woman. Oh. Very attractive woman. And then, of course, English? he he was double teaming Marilyn Monroe with Bobby. You know. So, yeah. Yeah. And that wasn't reported. Okay. Good example. Anyway, hey, listen. Got to go. We've run out of that time. This was interesting. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, well, we talked about disease and presidents. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'll see you in a couple of weeks. This is Larry Bubbles Brown, folks. You got it. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. And welcome back here. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What happened to my background here? Look at that. It's doing doing really straight look at that oh boy this always has oh there we no now it's not uh let me see here hold on a second i know what i can do let me put up some uh white here there we go and there no wow wow that is strange that is really strange look at that hmm, hmm. let me see here if i were to move this down yeah and then i move it up is it is it still a problem? Oh well, I guess it is. Let me see. What happens if I turn the lights up here? Well, look at that. Is that that's really? It sucks. That really sucks. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me let me uh, let me let me try uh, turning up the lights a little bit here. No, that doesn't do it. That doesn't seem to do it, and that doesn't seem to do it. Wow. That's amazing. Hmm. Oh, let me see here. What else can I do? How else can I uh, uh, can I change this? Okay, I will go here to uh, filters, filters, right? I will go to my uh, camera. I will go to filters, and we'll see what happens here. Let me see if I can uh, can change it. See, everybody, see technically what I'm doing here. Okay, there's chroma key. And if I, uh, if I go out with, uh, uh, let me see here, a little similarity maybe? Maybe that change, oh, there we go, okay. There we go, there we go, I think. But I've gotta change this down a little bit. I've gotta go down a little bit. Oh no, I gotta go up. That's gotta go down, there we go. Gotta go down, gotta go down. Here we go, well, let me see here. Whoa. No, this is really, this really sucks, doesn't it? Huh? What is that all about? I have no idea. Uh, let me see here. Smoothness. No, that doesn't change it. It's over here. There seems to be, there seems to be a problem with uh, lighting or something. I don't know. That's really strange. Hmm. Oh, well. I think I'm okay now. I think I'm all right, but who knows? I'll I'll, I'll fix it over the weekend uh, because I, I now it seems to be okay, but there also seems to be a problem with my um, hmm. Hold on, folks. I just want to get this uh, fixed here. Uh, this is you know I I really am getting sick and tired of this actually, uh, but it's the way things go. Let me see here. Uh, if I go to this and then I maybe turn this up a little bit, maybe turn up the brightness just a tad, will it be okay? Let me see here. If I turn the brightness up, oh, huh? what is that? Wow, that's very, all very strange. It's all very strange. Okay, white balance temperature, turn that off, turn this on. Okay, I guess, uh, no, you see, see what happens if I get a little shade in there, my eyes all of a sudden disappear. No, oh, well, 
I don't know what the problem is, and I, quite frankly, don't give a good goddamn. Uh, let me see here. Let me just do one last thing here uh, and uh, see what happens with... Uh, oh, well, we'll just have to live with it, I guess. Huh? I guess? All righty. <sighs> I, I, I give up, you know. Um, I can go to this thing and uh, I go to camera and then it turns that up and then it turns this down. Watch this. See? Oops. Wait a minute. we we'll go down. There we go. Okay. Well, I guess this is as best as it's going to get. Anyway. Hello. How are you? Isn't this nice? Huh? Yeah. Anyway. Is my am I and my face is a little too red. I'm I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to fix this over the weekend. Anyway, uh, I've got some people to get in here and start talking to. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little technical stuff we've been doing, uh, and uh, we're uh, we've got uh, a whole bunch of people yeah. here. And let me see here. Let me go to the panel, and uh, there they are. So far, there's uh, Jeff, and there's. Vernon, and there is Charlie and Josh. Hello, Josh. And of Whoa. course, Trucker Steve is here as well. So, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not dead yet. You're not dead yet. No, <laughs> how, me either. How do you know? How are you feeling? Okay, oh, good. You good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you look healthy. Yeah, you know. I feel a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're good looking you. healthy. Um, I haven't I haven't been on the show that much lately because I sleep a lot early because of my dialysis appointments. Yeah, yeah. darn. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we'll just have to do the show at a more convenient hour tip for you. You know? Uh, anyway. Huh. Mm -hmm. hmm. So where are we? Let's see here. So I'm sorry I had a little technical difficulties there, but I can't figure out what happened with my blue screen or green screen mm -hmm. or whatever, but it was not doing what it should do. I'll fix it over the weekend. Anyway, um, um, let me see here. Oh, listen, uh, I uh, uh, we went to the uh, this virtual Van Gogh thing they have here. It was a big deal. Where where it, I can't really describe it, but it's kind of a virt they call it a, a virtual Van Gogh or whatever and you go into this these rooms and they're all the pictures are all over and they've animated them and so on and there are two of them in New York a and Marjorie took me to the wrong one <laughs> <laughs> she no, and to, uh, I, I, I love her for her sweetness and in, in getting tickets for this but a friend of hers got tickets earlier and they saw it a couple of weeks ago at this other location and the other location she said was so much better this was just what this was was just the the moving exhibit and then a bunch of souvenirs that you could buy and all i could exit think, through the gift oh, shop huh? yeah well he, yeah exit through the gift shop exactly <laughs> i as a matter of fact we're gonna go see a uh, a, a banksy uh, exhibition so i wonder if we do exit through the gift shop on that one Anyway, so so anyway, uh, 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 here are all these these souvenirs of uh, Van Gogh, like um, what do you call it, thermos bottles with Van Gogh's art on it. And you're going, you know, when Van Gogh painted this, do you think he said, you know, when I'm finished with this, I'm going to try and turn these into thermos bottles, you know? No, no. So I hated it. I really did. I, I Coffee thought, mugs. Well, what they were doing is they were animating his, they were animating his art. And, and you know, they were stripping his art of the backgrounds and, you know, Dr. Dash A, which is uh, the, the famous painting of his, you had the doctor, but you didn't have the background. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's all part of it. It's, it's all part of the way he did it. And it was just, I thought it was ghastly. What, what is that noise? Anybody I'm know in. what it is? Huh? Hmm. Well, anyway. So that almost what, sounds like what you what you used to have on uh, Skype was slapback. No, well, well, let me let me just uh, turn this down a second and then bring it back up and see if see it's still there. 
I don't know. Mm. Uh, um, let me. I the big s suspect is always Jeff. But, <laughs> but listen to that. What? Oh boy! Between the picture tonight and <laughs> you know, it never ends. It never ends. Um. Uh, <laughs> you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody, everybody, mute yourselves for a second. And let me see if it still does it. Okay. Okay. They're all muted except for Jeff. But Jeff, you're, fi yeah. you're fine. It isn't you, Jeff. Okay. Uh, Vernon, turn yours on. Hello, Vernon. Can you hear me now? Yep. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Charlie, turn yourself on. I mean, I mean, I don't mean turn yourself on. I mean, there, are you okay? Your turn on. Now, Josh, turn yourself on. Okay, Josh is fine. Okay, uh, we only have one person left, and that's Trucker Steve. Turn it on, Trucker Steve. Um, un unmute yourself. Do you know where to do that? Yeah. Okay, and now it's fine. Huh. That's strange. And Jeff, Process of elimination means it's Jeff. <laughs> well, no, but Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff uh, uh, muted, is unmuted right now, and he's fine, you know. So I, I guess it was just something just, that we got I'm rid of by, by getting rid of it. But anyway, everybody, thank you for joining us tonight with all the technical difficulties, the back screen not being very good, you know, things like that. Really nice. Really good. Anyway. Uh, where are we? So, um, mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, so, so th that's what, that's what happened today with me. And then, uh, I had to re-register myself to vote because they sent me a thing saying, well, when you went down and you did this provisional ballot, you didn't put down a party you're supposedly part of or something. And I changed my, my, my party. And uh, I did all of that online, and they sent me a note saying you're now a Democrat, and uh, that was the uh, the sum total of it. And uh, apparently, something didn't go through. So tonight, I re-registered again. So that that too. Did well, any? You were a Republican now. What? <laughs> I, I'm, I said, I, well, I thought you thought know that. something. It you were. It doesn't matter what you are. You know. The only difference is you can't vote in a primary if you're an independent. Mm. That's why I stopped being an independent, because I want to be able to vote in the primary. I felt disenfranchised. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that if I sign up as a Republican, I can go over and fuck up their their uh, their stuff, yeah, you know? Right? right, I can always vote for like the horrible guy or the, or the worst guy or whatever. I think they should uh, do away with all primaries anyway. Well, of course, of course. Save lots of taxpayer money. But anyway, so I, I don't know. I just, and, <clears throat> um, but um, did anybody today, I, mean, I hate to go back to the Cuomo thing, but there has been a major development. Did anybody see the, the uh, lawyer for Cuomo today? I, I only heard that if, somebody's pressing charges. Well, no. Okay. Let's, that's all part of it. Okay. Uh, if you get a chance, go on to YouTube and and if you go to just news, it'll be one of the one of the things that's there. It's the yeah. the lawyer for for Cuomo, literally laying out part of their case, and one of them is this woman who is now filing criminal charges against the governor. <laughs> for having fondled her breasts, right? That's the worst accusation of all of them. Nobody else said, hey, you know, touch me under my blouse or whatever. Oh, he, you know, he asked me some questions that made me feel uncomfortable or, uh, you know, whatever. She lays out this woman's complete, uh, it supposedly happened when he went, she went to the Capitol to help him with a, either an iPhone problem or something like that, right? Wasn't she his assistant? Well, they say an executive assistant. He's known yeah. as executive assistant one, because she doesn't want to be named. Oh, All right? Wow. Okay. So she's filed the criminal charges. They went on today, 
and they listed every movement she made when she was in that building. And she told the newspaper she was only there for like 10 minutes, but it turned out she was there for two hours. And none of those were spent in the executive office. And they list everywhere she was. And all the emails she sent back and forth within the company, within the, the capital and everything. Yeah. And it shows that Cuomo couldn't have possibly done what she said he did. Uh, and then they had another one. I'm trying to remember which one that was. Um, that... Uh, uh, that they that they brought up and th oh this oh this was the oh her name is Boyle or Doyle or Bosley or something like that and she was actually running for political office and they have all the goods on her that she was doing this to make him look bad as and so she could also get publicity for her run for office so what they're charging is that the, what the 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 group the people who investigated him did is they ignored anything that didn't play into him having done something. And they, and they and the, according to the lawyers, they had this information and they didn't use it, okay, when they came to their decision. So, I mean, it looks like it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle royale going on in a couple of weeks here in the state of New York with this whole thing. And uh, he's ta they've taken the gloves off. I mean, and they've, they've, got, they've got the goods on this one woman, at least. It looks like it, at least. And they laid it out. They actually had the graphs and, the, you know, where she was, when she was, and where she was doing it, and who she talked to, and how she communicated, and how she liked, I don't know, the cookies or something they had there in the, on the first floor. And blah, 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 blah. It's really very fascinating. So if you get a chance, watch I'm that. Look it up. Now I'm interested in what do you think? What do you think, Vernon? I mean, about what I just said. I mean, you're not completely 100 percent up to on to it, right? It goes back to the discussion that got out of hand on Tuesday, and yeah. I was there, kind of <laughs> sitting sitting back and uh, watching it go on. But it it uh, there were there were two opinions that both were valid. Yours very valid opinion and Robert had a very valid opinion mm -hmm. but nowhere during that discussion in hindsight did I hear that expressed in other words that's a very valid opinion however I have a different opinion and it just it started going like this yeah okay, well you can't have a reasonable discussion once it gets out of hand like that from what you're saying if that's true then Cuomo's got a damn good defense yeah yeah, well, if you go to this, if you go to it, it's very, it's fascinating. They literally list every movement this woman made while she was in the in the uh, in the executive offices, and they can pretty much do that these days because you know they follow texts and things like that, and uh, it, it, it seems to say that at no point was she alone with the governor. You know. She claimed that after she left the room and uh, told him to stop it, he slammed the door. And they said, if somebody slams a door in that old building, you hear it everywhere in the building and nobody heard it. You know, uh, the, these were things she said to the newspaper. So they're taking her accounts that she gave to the newspaper about what went on and just tearing them down and saying, you know, she's, she's patently lying. So. That's what a good defense lawyer does. That's what a good defense lawyer does, exactly. So, you know, uh, I er, it's 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 good TV, you know. And if you're following this, have you been following this whole thing, Josh, or do you just not care? I wouldn't say following it. I mean, I'm aware of it. I yeah. know a fair amount about it. We've discussed it here. I mean, I'm not. I'm not glued to it or anything like that. I mean, but I'm. Well, we're not ask, ask, you know. asking that you be glued to it. You know. I mean, but oh, I, I mean, I know what's going on. I mean, you know, I didn't uh, see his lawyer's press conference or anything today. I mean, and I haven't been like watching their right. press conference. Well, you know, something like you probably pay, I, I know what's going on. I, I, I pay attention more attention to it than you guys do because I live here in New York. Yeah. You know, and it's a big New York story. Mm -hmm. I pay attention because yeah. my son lives in New York. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I'm not a very big fan of Cuomo, um, even before any of that, really. Uh, I mean, I think I got caught up, you know, and tonight uh, in a few hours of some of the shows from the middle of the week. And, you know, look, frankly, I don't understand why people can just not let other people think something else and then kind of go over it or whatever and then you reach a point where the other person's mind isn't going to be changed or anything well, well then you know well the, the only well, place I where guess. i would kind of disagree with vernon was is that i pretty much had the attitude about I, you know that's your opinion you know and i'm not, I'm not going to hold it against you you know what we're doing is right. we're having discussions here we're not trying to start wars there's no no winning or losing here no, yeah. but what I was talking about though is yeah. that it is a very it's a very valid point that when you're in public office, oh, one yeah. of your primary jobs is is to have the faith of the public that you're doing what you should be doing. Yeah, but what happens when other people go about eroding that faith in spite of the fact that it's maybe not warranted? No, that's a valid point too. Yeah. I mean, if these yeah. people are seeking uh, public office themselves and they're just trying to sling dirt because they they want to get elected to your your job yeah then you know well you know that, what i would it, do I it mean, could all be bullshit too you know if you're if you're governor or you're even a, a, a famous person of any sort you should never be in a room alone mm -hmm. with a woman without someone oh, else there okay um without somebody else being there it's just not a good idea. I mean, I can, yeah, I can take both sides of it, you know, and I understand your your point. I mean, you know, the stuff kind of stuff that you argued about on Tuesday and Wednesday or whatever. But I mean, I guess, like I said, really don't care for Cuomo, etc. The whole resignation thing or whatever. But I mean, I can understand you saying that even if some of this stuff happened it's not completely egregious or whatever mm -hmm. and you know and then like on the other hand even though i don't like the guy look i could accept the fact if somebody even if cuomo came out and said hey you know what it's all 100 percent true he did it i did it it's 100 percent true i like women i like touching women i like feeling women i like seeing if i can fuck women and you know what that's who i am and i'm staying because the other side can't throw me out because when their guy did this and 10 times worse they said it was locker room talk Right. And he stayed. Yeah. And I'm fucking staying. Right. And, you know, right. I, and I could say, okay. Yeah. I mean, no. and say I liked it, okay, or anything. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I mean, I, but I could say. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. Fine. Here's the thing. You know? I don't think, you know, like, uh, uh, I wasn't that big a fan of Cuomo's. Okay. You know, in fact, <laughs> the funny story was I, you know, I had this neuropathy and I went to my neurologist and he then gave me a bunch of tests you know, asked me a bunch of questions for a test. And he said, who's the governor of New York? And I didn't know, <laughs> to tell you the damn truth. And then he said, well, who's the mayor of New York? And I couldn't remember. And that's how much I cared about New York politics, okay? When he finally said Cuomo and de Blasio, I went, oh yeah, okay. So now, that's before, that's before the uh, uh, the whole you know deal with uh, with with uh, uh, COVID. COVID comes along, and I become very aware of Cuomo because every day I looked forward to those pep talks he was giving us, and they were yeah you know, they're really very good pep talks. Uh, I think that he brought about a a certain attitude in New York that we're going to beat this thing, and we were just I mean. I got to tell you, I went past Mount Sinai Hospital, and there was a tent outside put up by, I think, uh, Franklin Graham's organization. You know, come on in. We'll, we'll help you with COVID. Just say you believe in God. I mean, but there was a tent outside Mount Sinai. They were using big freezer trucks as morgues. I mean, it was, it was horrible here. 900 new cases every day. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, more than that. 900 deaths every day. I mean, can you even imagine that? 
Well, he brought it down to a point where it went to zero, okay? But through his little talks every day and his, his come on, we can do this and wear a mask and, you know, do this and do that, and uh, taking all the measures to, like, clean up the subways and uh, on and on and on. <clears throat> and so I got to like him because of that. You know, but I knew he was a bully. You know, I knew that when if you were a political opponent, you better watch out. You know, he was going to do anything it took to to smash you. Um, he was that kind of guy. He was that kind of politician. So, you know, you there take are lots of politicians like that. Yeah, you take the good with the bad. You know, I mean, uh, I think the only people that should not be allowed to run for politics are politicians. You know, I mean, the people we've got who want that kind of job are kind of nutcases. Especially professional politicians like Mitch McConnell. Yes, absolutely. Uh, from your own state, right? Yep. Yep. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I just, uh, I, it's, it's, it's uh, who knows? Anyway, I'm punchy again tonight. I don't know why. Uh, so, yes, Jeff. Well, I think the one thing that's interesting is that this lady is actually suing the governor. Yeah, yeah. But she, but when they, let, I don't know how far she's going to go now because well, they laid that, out this I, case and this, you know, yeah. and lawyers don't generally lay out a case before they go to court, right? They they want to surprise people, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And and uh, here they laid it out. They said, "Come ahead, sue us." But let's look at this. We got all this information here showing you're lying. Basically. Well, in every in every court case that I'm aware of, mm -hmm. there's the thing called discovery. So mm -hmm. if they yeah. if they know stuff, they've got to tell the other side what they yeah. know. Yeah. yeah, but I'm saying, but you don't have to show your hand until it's time to show your hand. Up here, they were showing their hand right now. They said, "This is what we got on you. This is this is." This it looked like this would be what would wind up in the thing that they that the state has requested because they're thinking about impeaching him uh, that uh, they uh, they should uh, they they do they want to uh, tell their side of the story and they've said yes and by the way everybody I'm on TV today this is our side of the story because they felt uh, that what went on was that they wanted they had a preconceived notion of what they wanted the answer to be what they wanted the result to be, and they discounted all information that would have played into him not having done it and just accepted information that was the other way. So, And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a really legal case. It was just that they were uh, uh, looking into these accusations, and this is what they came out with. But it seemed like they were kind of, in, in what they did, they didn't come out with just information. They came out with just a lot of really nasty stuff and uh, you know but anyway hello Charlie haven't seen you uh, this week because you're probably baseballing it up to a fa fairly well right yeah yeah been several weeks um, I just got rained out tonight yeah well I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, of changing uh, the time the show goes on switching with Jack so you can then call the show you know, uh, no, he'll be asleep by then. Who? <laughs> Charlie. I'm on Jack's show every night. No, he's on Jack's show. Um, you know, well, I'm asleep. Uh, you, you're asleep. Yeah. 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 Uh, let me. Sometimes see. I have a hard time staying up this late. Hmm. Sometimes I have a hard time staying up this late. No. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, hello <laughs> to uh, uh, Brian Neary. Look, Brian. You see what? Nice hat. Huh? Nice hat, huh? Nice hat. Huh? That's a, I got that from somebody. Wait a minute. Let me just steal that. Hold on a second. Uh, I got some other stuff here, too, that was sent to me. Uh, I got to take a picture of that so I can show all my friends at work a has been. Some fucking has been wearing yeah. my our stuff. The, yeah. Yeah. The, oh, nice. It has been. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, hold on a second now. Uh, I don't have my laptop from work, so I have like all this setup. Hmm. No light or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, and I got some kind of noise in the picture tonight. God bless it. Anyway, what is this to begin with? 
Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's Adrian. She made a rainbow for you. No, go see the rainbow. Oh, oh okay. other oh, way. Oh, it's the other way. There's the rainbow. There you go. See, it's a rainbow. Nice. Yeah. Rainbow with the ground on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And what, what? What? Oh, this is the ground on the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Now I want to show you the other thing she sent me. This is the one she made like last year, and I keep forgetting to send it to you. Uh, look, look at that. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, there's there, a citizen there, panel. Well, there, no, but there, there's, there's, yeah, citizen panel. There's Adrian, exactly. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and who is this guy with one hair coming up the That's top me. of his head? <laughs> <laughs> you see that, folks? All the boy, all the men have like that, and all the girls have the hair going there. Right? And then there's the citizen panel, yeah, right? Yeah, on the, on the computer. Now you know what is great about this, and and it, it, she has a real talent. Everything is in proper perspective. Yeah. You know, she, mm -hmm. uh, when she gets older, she probably would be very good thinking about an art career because she already she has a sense of perspective. Yeah. And, her proportions uh, are really good. The proportions. And this is from like a year ago. She's gotten a lot better. But yeah, her legs and everything are yeah are yeah not too short, not too long. Oh, yeah. When was this done? Same thing, uh, six months ago or so. Okay. Well, you, well, well this is a better one. If, if you see her, yeah, tell her I, I love her. Up. Tell her I love she'll her. She'll be up later. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Alex, hold up the other one. About, Which uh, one? The picture? The, the one where, where it shows a little laugh. Yeah. 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 Bam's looking at it now. Yeah, that, uh, it's Brian with one hair coming off the television set. He looks like Zippy the Pin. Hey, that's there. all of us, right? Yeah. He's yeah. got four legs, too. Yeah. I see, Bob, I see uh, Robin Natale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an old one. <laughs> you know, I have hey, her. I think Bree, Bree was on that one, too, so that's an old version. Who? Oh, oh. Bree was on the Citizen panel, I think, there. So that's an old oh, I heard from Bree. Oh, really? Yeah, Bree's been writing me today mm. on my on my uh, YouTube page uh, and uh, saying just nasty crap that I don't understand, accusing me of all kinds of stuff. From what? Of what? you? Well, you know, he was, a, he was a big Trump fan, so maybe he just pissed off that Trump lost. Uh, I know. What happened was, let me see here. Let me see if I can find the... the I always thought he was a nice guy for you. She was like well, this whole he was, he was okay, yeah. <laughs> Um, Don't worry about him because they can't get okay. the vaccine over there. This is Rico. It had to do with the with the thing with uh, Bob Natale. Mm -hmm. You deserve it, Alex. That guy attacked me out of nowhere, and you piled on. I wasn't even there. I participated in your show for years, listened to you for years, and you tossed me away like yesterday's trash. Uh, ad hominem attacks and more. And what goes around comes around. And then he sent me a second note here that reads, Just Desserts. Now, does anybody remember what went on? Who is this? This is, is remember Bree? The guy who was always cleaning his backyard. Oh, Kuala Lumpur? Yeah, he lives in Kuala Lumpur. In Kuala Lumpur. I mean, I, uh, I, all I know is that somebody said something nasty about him on the chat. Okay, and then uh, I think either I mentioned it or one of you guys mentioned it, and we all kind of laughed a little bit, and then he said, well, that's it, I've had it, and he left. Now, mm -hmm. I, 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 number one, I didn't know it was my job to, you know, defend him. Secondly, you take that kind of thing and let it roll off your back, you know, mm -hmm. what, you're going to be, you know, into it with trolls? I mean, I can't remember. Does anybody remember exactly what went down? Um, I just remember he kept gardening, and it was very distracting. <laughs> yeah. Remember, he was gardening. Yeah, you're right. He's so he so was gardening, and like then he would he'd be rustling around, and then he'd mention something, and then walk away again. Yeah, I, I but I mean, he had his patch. You know, walk around the mall. Or something. But I don't, I don't remember you telling him he couldn't call or anything. No, yeah, and no, I, don't, no. I don't think I tossed him to the wolves either. No, you didn't. Ban him or anything? No. No, but I didn't. But at least, but, but at least he's still watching. At least he's still watching. Can I? I mean, can I say this? Free. <laughs> if you're watching, just call up and discuss yeah, it. What's wrong? Free. Yeah. I mean, come on. It, what you're going to hold on to a grudge I for the rest of your life? Know. You know, life's too short to hold on to grudges. I mean, oh, how I mean, many people die from COVID and they're worried about? I, 
you know, with grudges, mm. I had a theory, and it was a it was a good theory. It was a fine theory. Uh, I would only let a grudge go for about five years, <laughs> <laughs> and then I would say, it's "Okay, favorite, the grudge is now over with." And the reason it's over with is life's too short to hold a bunch of grudges, right? But you 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 get rid of a grudge, you know. Now he has a grudge against me, which I think is not deserved. But in his mind, it is, and if it is, I'm sorry if, if I did anything to upset you. You know, that's it, plain and simple. Uh, well, you still got four more years. What? <laughs> four more years. Four years for what? Well, you said you for five grudge. Years. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Five no, but uh, four no. more years for the grudge. No, but I don't. I mean, have you a, haven't. You I haven't don't. told. Uh, you haven't told. You know, Robert. He couldn't call either. Correct. I mean, uh, no, right. no. You know, although I think I mean, at this you're, point you're, I'm in, so, I, I think I'm 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 I deserve an apology. Yeah, well, I mean, okay. like, look, I mean, I, I just some of the intolerance that you know you get from people that call here sometimes of other people's opinions mm -hmm. has you know rubbed people the wrong way at times. I mean, we're a little bit more freewheeling on Saturdays when we talk because of that you know but like here's the thing i mean people fight and then they get over it like big fucking yeah deal so, i mean you and i can air our fucking old dirty laundry right did we not at one time i mean we, we, uh, right? we, oh yeah you and i big yeah, fucking had, i mean and then yeah. whatever yeah and uh, uh yeah. you know but everyone has to get all like you know and, and like what uh, at this at the time you know i got all you know, twenty messages or whatever. Oh, you're such an asshole and dick. <sighs> you fucking care. That, 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 that's, People that, fight that, and then they move on. Well, I mean, it's what I wrote. I wrote Robert. The last note I wrote him went, "Come on, it's only a show. You know, it's only a show. You're gonna take it that <laughs> seriously." You know, he was mean at the end though. He called you a hack. He said you are never a no, oh no, 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 no. You're a has oh, been. God. You're a has been. Has been. Which, yeah. by the way, uh, mm -hmm. in Robert's case, Robert, it's better than being a never was. You know. <laughs> so I mean, uh, but I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I just, you know, and uh, if if he were to apologize for what he did the other night, which I think was unwarranted, because I've been very good to him. You know, I've given. He wasn't happy coming on the show because certain people were coming after him. So I gave him his own little shot at, uh, you know, doing Thursday nights for about 25 minutes with me. And I, I was enjoying know. it a little bit. Yeah. You know, and I don't do that for everybody. Although no, I I, it, it, uh, at the rate I'm going, it may wind up being everybody. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I and I have always been very nice and appreciative of him and everything. And when I we didn't hear from him for a while, I, I wrote him to say, hey, are you OK? You know, things like that. So when he all of a sudden went on this rage, all of a sudden of just attacking me and then finishing off by telling me to go fuck myself after he was bothered by somebody else telling, it, telling him I think it was, uh, um, I think it was uh, uh, Phil Meyer who yeah, told him to go yeah, fuck yeah. himself. That was funny. Okay, was and he didn't like it, you know. No. Uh, but he told me to go fuck myself and then uh, said, you're a has-been and hung up, you know. So. Ver Vernon has his hand up. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Vernon. I wasn't on the show Wednesday night, uh, but I did listen to it after it was recorded and posted on Facebook I mean uh, yeah. on YouTube yeah. but I got the impression not that he didn't overreact I agree he kind of overreacted on what he did to you and said to you and then hung up in a huff mm -hmm. but from the previous night and then again yes. on Wednesday night he felt like at least I got the impression that he felt like you weren't listening to him about the public trust that Cuomo was seemingly losing. No, he was just mad because I disagreed with him. He he did, you know. A, no, a but film, he, he film. wanted to be listened to. He wanted his point of view to be acknowledged, and you wouldn't acknowledge it. Oh, I I I, 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 I agree. I had acknowledged his point of view the night before. I mean, that but, I understand his point of view, but I I have mine, and here's mine. Um, yeah, but the other thing too was that uh, trying to make the uh, equivalency 
between what was happening with Cuomo and the accusations against Cuomo versus some of the other Me Too crap. And, well, and I think that I don't, I, I don't think he agreed with that. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, uh, I happen to think that you don't want to do anything to dismiss rape as uh, putting it on the same level with rape because, I mean, it's not. It's just not. Right. And I haven't heard anybody do that except on that show Tuesday night. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing was, uh, uh, it was Tuesday night, and then there was, was it Tuesday night? Uh, Tuesday night that we we argued it. Yes. And then I think it was Wednesday night he hung up on me. Was that it? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, it, yeah, you listen to Tuesday night. Like Brennan says, Tuesday night is really the key. You look at that, and only you and him were talking all night. Even Alan didn't get a well, word I, edgewise, I, which I is felt, amazing. <laughs> so. I, had, I had people write and complain that he was monopolizing the show. He, yeah, to yeah. get his point of view. But it, to him, it wasn't his point of view because at the very beginning, wow. he called in even on the chat. He was saying, you are wrong. You know, he wasn't saying, yeah. I don't like, I don't agree with your opinion, but he said you were wrong. And that's but where the next like, night, I think he came on to do on. exactly what he did. You know, because he did that to Phil. Yeah, Previous, you're right. You might almost be right. almost the same right thing. After. Phil says, you must know now how it feels. Yeah. You know. He really went after Phil. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, you know, I don't, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I I just, I, I was just disturbed because I didn't know where this, this vitriol was coming from. Because no, I, I think that was an overreaction. Yeah, of course. Of course it was an overreaction. And I'm not sure what else was going on in his life or whatever, but you know, we all we all get our we all get our our things in a ringer once in a while. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, if he wants to say he's sorry for the way he acted towards me, uh, he's welcome on this show anytime. You know, I got mad at Tony one night, and Tony came on the next night and apologized. You and know? can I say something about that? I I really am sorry, Alex, when I said that, but it really wasn't. And I told this to Phil, it wasn't meant really towards you indirectly. What I was meant is it was, and I don't like to speak about Robert like this, but when him and Phil were arguing that night, mm-hmm. he he said, "Phil, if I scratch you, you're a racist." To me, that's what ticked me off. When you were kind of like taking his, not taking, so you were trying to play peacemaker. He pretty. I don't want to talk about, it, but uh, but he did say that, and I got annoyed because he doesn't even know anybody to say. I wouldn't even say you know so and so is a racist because Phil was disagreeing with his point. I think, but you don't call somebody like in an underlying way that term without even knowing. Well, that. look, look. This is all a bunch you know, of people. A bunch it, of you know. people getting together. I'm just, you know, I'm discussing just stuff. Maybe they get a little heated with each other, but nobody yeah. should walk away from this program feeling hurt. That's not Even the that, purpose of that, the program. That, right, that, that doesn't matter. I mean, I wish we had more disagreement. It's more yeah. fun. And it's good I to mean, disagree, that, that, Josh, like you said, but no. don't, like, you don't want to call anybody, I would never want to call somebody a yeah. bad term. I mean, that, 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 that's bad. the problem that we get into sometimes is when people don't agree sometimes you get one party this is not robert or anything i'm just saying this has happened in the past many times and they they just can't you know they just can't get in their mind that someone else would believe something differently than they do and then they yeah, suddenly it's right. personal with you and it's just yeah. i mean i wish you had like three or four people who maybe held phil's opinion that called with this group and it would it would be way more exciting i mean i'm sure you remember the very long Saturday night one time uh, where we discussed the January 6th riot and uh, probably thought Patrick and I were going to get in a fight there for about 45 minutes but we didn't because that's not what we do we just yeah. you know we're off and we went round and round about that well, I, I, and the I, impeachment I, I, and it was fucking I, great I, man. I guess I can say what happens every, every Saturday night uh, Patrick and I and Josh and, and Kevin uh, get together and just get on Zoom and just talk to each other, right? And, you know, I totally disagree with maybe 50% of what Patrick says. Uh, and and yet, I appreciate Patrick, and he appreciates me. And, and it's all done in the spirit of camaraderie. And I just don't think that anybody should take this program that seriously that they act the way that Robert did the other night. You know, it's just, it, you know, I can see you being tough in your opinion. That I understand, you know. But I just, he was I, just being rude and yeah. inappropriate. He, he came on that night to be the way it turned out. 
Yeah. Okay. If, if you have people that listen, you know, and I, you know, hopefully the, the panel would agree mm-hmm. that do not hold the same political views as most of the people in here or be or whatever. I, I would be perfectly happy if they called. And I would be more than willing to go around in circles with them for an hour and a half. I yeah. mean, yeah. The most fun I fucking had in a long time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it doesn't have to be like, I really hate that guy or what. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, well, I mean, the problem, you know, the problem I've gotten is, upset before openly when people would call Phil a name about his physical size or something. I mean, like, I, you know, I. Yeah. What, you can't argue with Phil. With Phil? You got to call him fat? I mean, come on, man. The problem with Phil was he would dominate the conversation. Yeah, that, that's you know, the problem that Phil yeah. had. Yeah. That was the problem Phil had. When you get a group like this going on, you can't have one guy interrupting everybody when they say two words. And that's what Phil did. Yeah, well, that was the problem that Phil had. And part of that was is that because there weren't, say, other people of his ilk on this panel, um, on this panel, uh, he... uh, He He would run rampant. He would run rampant because he felt he had to defend himself. Mm -hmm. So he felt kind of, you know... But, you know, I I would certainly be up for plenty of people from the other side you know i mean i sometimes think man you know i i know a few people that are you know as whacked out in the head as phil you know (laughs) maybe i can get them to call you know i mean look why was why was crossfire such a popular program on cnn in the 90s i mean because people like to watch people argue right i mean it's more entertaining than to me anyway than a rachel maddow or somebody Telling you what she thinks. Well, and that's what makes fifteen it, minutes with it, no one else to say anything against. That's what makes MSNBC so fucking boring, is oh, that yeah. there there isn't enough of that, you know, give yeah. and take. Uh, I know that when I started when I first started doing talk radio here in New York, I was at WMCA, which had just gone talk at the time, or half talk. They were half talk, half music. Very strange mm-hmm. format. Uh, uh, until a few years later when they all went all talk. But anyway, uh, uh, I went on um, after a guy by the name of Bob Grant. Well, I like Bob Grant. And Bob was a, 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 a you know, a, a right winger. But he was oh, yeah. he was all show business, okay? Well, he, he, knew, he knew this was putting on a show, too. And he and I, uh, when we would do our crossover between his show and my show... We'd start getting into arguments. You forward them, you know, and that made for good radio. And then I would do my show, and the person after me might be a middle of the roader, and the person mm-hmm. after that, and a right winger. The trouble is, you turn on to something like MSNBC, and you're getting the same soup every hour. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the people they bring on, no Republican wants to be on MSNBC. So consequently, you've got nothing but a bunch of people you know, blasting away at the Republicans. Uh, and I would love to see a channel where you had this mix up of, of right and left, you know, right and left on the on the station, but that you don't. And that's the trouble with the, with the, what they're doing today. Um, you yeah. have to change channels to watch that. Well, you have to go back and forth really fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or you get the you get the fifteen minute segment on Fox where they bring in a Democrat for five minutes and they argue and then they go to a commercial. Wait, That's I'll all tell it. you, go over to Fox. If I go over to Fox, I feel like I'm going into a different world altogether. Sure, it is. You know, it's like all of a sudden I've gone from a place where uh, there was a riot on January sixth to a place where it was really just a bunch of people having a fun time. You know. They and you patriots go, protesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and while I think that the perception of what went on that day is the one that I saw with my eyes, although I did make an argument years ago that the trouble with television is it's a frame, okay? And whatever they're photographing in that frame is what they want you to see. So yeah. the, 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 the eye yeah. of the camera is very, quite prejudiced. But people say, I saw it, so therefore it must be true. 
And I was saying this about the riots in Chicago, that nobody saw what was going on outside the frame, you know, where people getting their heads beaten in and everything mm -hmm. else, you know. And um, I think that's the problem, too, is that there's this myopic vision of the cameras with those networks as to what they're actually going to shoot. And, and But that day, I don't think you could put that camera any in any direction and not gotten that carnage, okay? So I'm not going to say it, it, the cameras were prejudiced. I mean, wh where were they having this happy party? Uh, I, I don't see it. Yeah. But nevertheless, and then you go over to Fox and you hear one thing about COVID and you go over to MSNBC, you hear a whole different thing about COVID. So, I mean, it's just, this has got to stop. You know, the media is ruining this country. Listen, uh, yes, Jack's yeah. got his hand up. Yes, Jack's got his oh, hand. Oh, hey, that, he doesn't understand that you don't have to raise your hand anymore because when you start talking, we see you're doing it. But anyway, oh, okay. go ahead, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I'm thinking about I'm doing you know my show where you got to raise your hand. Right. Uh, first of all, Alex, I agree with you 100 percent that there was a time when uh, this talk media that we do mm -hmm. was far more varied. And you'd have a station that would do, like you said, there'd be a guy on the left, a guy on the right, maybe a guy in the middle. And frankly, we talked more about other things than politics. Right. And uh, I think the sad thing that's happened is the, the corporations that run the big outfits have said, look, we know we can make money doing this and we don't have to worry about well that's exactly what what nbc did with msnbc yeah i exactly. mean if you it, think when they were well, they've changed ownership but they used to be ge if you think ge is a is a left-wing organization you're mm -hmm. out of your mind my god you know? i got so tired of friends of mine who weren't in the media saying well, the media is all left wing, and, and I turned to some other friends and said, "Oh, it's all right wing." And I, uh, and I had to tell them, the media is all money. <laughs> well, let me tell you this: I used to every week I was on MSNBC for about 12, 12 weeks straight. Do you remember whose show I was on? Yeah, I used to watch that. No, was I don't remember the show. Huh? I Tucker remember Carlson. Tucker Carlson's show. I was on with Tucker Carlson. He was on MSNBC, folks. You know, he did for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Now he's over in Hungary with the dictator. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have to say, the Tucker treated me pretty damn well. I mean, that I have to say. I, I, I his politics are for crap, but he treated me okay. You know, and I was treated fairly on that show. And even when the uh, when MSNBC said, "Ah, we don't like that segment you do with Alex Bennett and this other guy." Uh, we would like to just to do something else, blah, blah, blah. He went out and fought for us. Uh, but he didn't win, but he fought for us. And, you know, I, I mean, I was as left-wing on that show as you could possibly get, you know. I was probably more left-wing than anybody who's on MSNBC right now. Uh, and yet uh, Tucker was very fair to me and was very happy to have me on and liked my participation. He didn't suddenly say, oh, that Bennett, he's too, too left wing. I don't want him on. So, you know, but that's what happened back in the day. You know, he could be there and then somebody else who was on the left could be there. And it was, it was kind of, uh, uh, you know, it's just sad what's happening. And it's media that has, is bringing this country to its fucking knees, I think. Uh, because media and and religion, oh religion, media no, and religion. but religion has been a problem ever since one guy found out that he could make money getting people from other people by trying to sell them a fantasy. Okay, Jim Baker, huh? Jim Baker, Jim Baker, yeah, Jim Baker, Jim, Jim and Tammy Faye. Ah, uh, you know something? Warm spot in my heart for them. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if I have time. We, we're running out of time here. What? I thought, I thought their show was the most, uh, most uh, uh, entertaining show on television. Uh, and you've never seen Jimmy Swaggart? No, Swaggart I, is a creep. But, but <laughs> it, 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 Jim and Tammy Baker, 
uh, all they want, all they wanted to do was entertain their Christian audience. That was basically their mission. They did it with and puppet shows, huh? <clears throat> and, and collect money. But they also built what they said they were going to build. They said, "Send us your money. We're going to build an amusement park for Christians." And they did it. You know, it was there. Uh, and uh, the, the problem was not with. Uh, 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 Jim Baker and Tammy Faye the problem was with the people who were running the place while they were doing the shows I mean I was I heard stories that people would go into the counting room you know where all the money comes in and everything and start stuffing money in their pockets now this wasn't Jim and Tammy this was other people you know I mean I'm not going to defend them entirely because they were religious hustlers but of all of them, probably the probably the best, you know, and 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 the most decent. Swagger was a creep. Falwell was horrible. And do you know why uh, Jim Baker went down? Because he had something they all wanted that he wouldn't share with them. In the early days, he saw the value of satellite delivery to TV shit stations, and so he got a whole bunch of transponders. On, uh, uh, on satellites. They didn't have any. If they wanted to go up, they had to go through him and use his transponders. And so they saw something there where they could jump in, grab PTL, grab the satellites, and have it for themselves. And so Falwell went to him and said, you're in trouble right now. All this stuff is happening, which they kind of created. And uh, if you want to get away from this, uh, just sign everything over to me, and then when you pass this, we'll, I'll give it back to you. Never yeah, did, right. Never did. <laughs> never did. There's a whole story there that's never been really written about what went down there, but it was, it was a whole power play among a bunch of God-fearing assholes, you know? Didn't Baker go to jail? Huh? Baker went to jail. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he went to jail. And, and, and I think it was, wasn't it over, what's her name, Jessica Hahn, I think, if I remember correctly? I think that was well, part of it, you um, know. But he, he had an affair with her, but I think he went to jail for embezzlement or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. Burns right. Yeah. You could be right. But I do remember, remember the Jessica Hahn part of it, that component. So, anyway. Yeah, but uh, we lost. We did we lose? Who do we lose? We lost somebody. Jack. 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 Oh Jack yeah, Clark. Jack had to go. He has to go he do has a to show. Go get ready for a show. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wasn't there one other person here though? I no. It's uh, everybody that should be. Anyway, one day I'll get into the whole Jim Baker thing when I'm a little more lucid and and I've got time to tell the whole story. But I I followed that whole thing very carefully because I used to watch that show every day. I found it incredibly entertaining. You know, especially the little kid who had no arms and no legs who used to roll around on the floor <laughs> on that show. <laughs> yeah. And then when they built the amusement park, they had, uh, I don't know, Timmy's house or whatever the guy's name was. And you could go see he and all his little weird friends, you know, had problems. Mm -hmm. And it was like their f version of a freak show. I mean, it was ama mm -hmm. some amazing stuff there. And, uh, but anyway. Hey, well, let's, in, in Kentucky, we have a tax, a tax, a payer-sponsored Ark Adventure. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Ark. Yeah. Oh, of where they? Ark. Yeah. yeah. They built an amusement park in northern Kentucky, and they did it with tax-free funds. Uh, nice. Well, because they're a religious organization, right? Yep. Right. Anyway, hey, listen, I, there, there goes the uh, music, um, and uh, it's uh, nice that you've been here. Uh, uh, we, of course, Jeff, always like having you here. Vernon, always, always happy to see your face here, okay? <laughs> Just know that. You're very welcome on this show. Until you get up at you with me, and then... No, uh, <laughs> and then I can go fuck myself. You can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Charlie Wallace, thank you. I wish baseball came to a close. When's it over? <laughs> not until December. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm not going to see you till December. Well, well he, lives, <laughs> he lives in Texas, so the surge might cut it short. Yeah, that oh, yeah. could be. That could be. Thank you very much, Josh. Appreciate it. 
uh, and it's good to see uh, Trucker Steve because uh, we like to make sure he's okay. So pop in here occasionally so we can see just see that you're okay. Um, uh, Josh, uh, uh, excuse me, not Josh. Tony, thank you. I already thanked Josh. Uh, and Kevin, thank you, and thank you to Brian. And by the way, this is a great hat. I love hats, and I'll probably be wearing this one more than less because it's just cut very nicely. You guys did a great job of it. So. That's a fit my head, my big head. Yeah. Anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There they go. Okay. Thank you, citizen panel. I appreciate it. I appreciate you all joining me tonight. And uh, I appreciate you out there. Uh, see, I got this background fixed now. Uh, I, I, I enjoy having all of you here, too. Uh, we'll see you again. Uh, let's see, Monday we do our little Monday 4 o'clock in the afternoon show. It's a very nice show. You should uh, check it out. It's called The Pop-Up. And then we'll see you again right back here, 1030. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay, will you? And by the way, if you haven't been vaccinated... Do it, okay? Bye.